Hello and welcome. I came across many questions from you in the past what a Scala Wave is and what a Scala Network is. I produced the video in September 2012 on YouTube where I demonstrated exactly both of them. In this video you see the instrumentation from a radio and power engineering use. This is a Scala Network Analyzer which identifies the impedance of a transmission line and a filter. I also demonstrated in this video that the dimension of a Tesla coil has an impact of the wave velocity of the frequency or the speed of light in the wire. So let us start simple. The term is mostly used in longer term propagations of particles. So in a, famous, a famous example would be the vibration in air by a sound fog. Let me give you a picture of that. I do not want to get too much into detail. Um, a full documentation of that will be provided for my members on my website. So what you see here is a vibration of a tuning fork. Based on the position of A and B, it is either causing the air molecules to compress or it will cause a refraction. This kind of behavior happens in all matter and is a longitudinal property are also called a pressure wave. In solid matter, we have a similar behavior, which is more complicated because it involves electron quasi-particles. In physics, quasi-particles and collective excitations, which are closely related, are emergent phenomena that occur when a microscopically complicated system such as solid behaves as if it contains different weakly interacting particles in vacuum. For example, as an electron travels through a semiconductor, its motion is disturbed in a complex way by its interaction with other electrons and with atomic nuclei. The electron behaves as thought it has a different effective mass travel unperturbed in vacuum. Such an electron is called an electron quasi-particle. In another example, the aggregated motion of electrons in the valence band of a semiconductor or a whole band in a metal, behave as thought the material instead contain positively charged quasi-particles called electron holes. Other quasi-particles uh, quasi -part or collective excitations include the photon, a uh, particle derived from a vibration of atoms in a solid, a plasmon, a particle derived from plasma oscillations and many others. It is important here to understand that this phenomenon explains the mechanism we experience when we work with Tesla coils. Professor Dr. Mail explains that the scalar wave is existent in the near field of any broadcast because it, it is part of it as it propagates as a vortex from a dipole antenna. Let me bring you a picture that shows you that. The charged carrier oscillates with high frequency in an antenna rod from longitudinal and standing wave. As a result, all the fields in the near zone of a Hertzian dipole are longitudinal scalar wave fields. The picture shows clearly how vortices are forming and how they come off the dipole. The vortex decay, however, depends on the velocity of propagation. Calculated at the speed of light, vortices already have decayed within half of the wavelengths. The faster the velocity, the more stable they get. They remain stable above 1 to 6 times the velocity. These very fast vortices contract in the dimension. They can now tunnel. Therefore, speed faster than light occurs at the tunnel effect. Therefore, no Faraday cage can shield such vortices, since the field vortices with particle nature, following the high frequency oscillation, permanently change the polarity from positive to negative and back. They don't have a charge on the average over time. As a result, they are almost unhindered penetrate solids. Particles with these properties are called neutrinos in physics. The field energy which is collected in my experiment according to that stems from the neutrino radiation which surrounds us. Because the source of the radiation 
all the same if it's origin or artificial or natural, is far away of the receiver. Every attempt of near field interpretation goes wrong. After all, the installed transmitter in the near field supplies only 10% of the received power. The 90%, however, which it concerns here, cannot stem from the near field zone. Now, let us look here at the scalar network in a different way, and I would like to compare it with the flow of water. Here in this short slides, I want to demonstrate the flow of um, the energy of the waves in the coils. And here I symbolize both coils with two water tanks, um, which are filled with water. So the water is uh, representing then the energy level we have, or yes, the strength of um, current or power, which is um, resides then at that very um, same time on both sides. So here in this first example, we see here a tuning to the resonance uh, frequency, and that is a Hertzian frequency. So the pressure is on both sides the same, and we have a balanced power on both coils. In the second picture, we are out of tune below the Hertzian frequency. We consume and reflect all the power we transmitting back to the amplifier. The receiver here has no impact regardless if we connect it or not. So technically here we are having all the power on the um, um, transmitter and nothing goes to the receiver. So on the third slide it shows the tuning to the scalar wave. So all pressure is now on the receiver side and now if we change the pressure now on the receiver side it has now an impact on the transmitter. The more pressure the receiver can take, the lower the pressure is on the transmitter. So in the last slide, now here I show the impact an impedance transformer have. So here I symbolize him here as a as a big tank on the side. It has an it's an additional reservoir of water, but needs only to swap a little bit over it to the transmitter to have a tsunami wave effect to the receiver, increasing the pressure dramatically on the receiver side. We are now capturing quasi-particles or neutrinos, which are giving the vibration and energy to the receiver. The fluctuating of potential from positive to negative becomes polarized in the receiver. Now we measure is COP greater than 1. This example is, equi is equivalent to any alternative energy system here. Energy flows from either a direct connecting transmitter to receiver or in the near field of both. Important is that the Hertzian frequency and standard resonance can not be used. A tuning has always to be asymmetrical to the scalar wave. So this concludes my little presentation and if you have any questions, please come back or join me on my website to get further under, um, updates of the latest um, um, findings I present in my videos. Thank you.